Oh, nice. It's good to see you again, too. My recovery... My recovery is going well. It's... Uh, it's long. And arduous. So... It, it's taken up a ton of my time and my energy, which is why we're taking this kind of slow. And we will be taking it slow today. Um, I don't want to just jump into Horizon without reacquainting myself with the game, with the mechanics, with the characters. Um, I feel like I'd be doing myself a disservice if I just barreled on through. I literally had to watch some of my old videos yesterday to remember what we were doing. <laughs> so, oh my goodness, Titan, Jedi, thank you guys for being sweet and kind to each other. You know I love to see it. I love when you guys are sweet and kind, particularly to each other. Ah, oh, thanks for getting this started off well. I really appreciate... I really appreciate the heck out of y'all. It, it makes me... It makes me feel better about coming back to streaming, especially during all this, like, hate raid and, and bot follow stuff. I was kind of nervous. Um, uh, cause... <laughs> you guys know me. I don't keep my mouth shut on the internet. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, like, it wouldn't surprise me if there was some... I don't know, person, individual, angry about, you know, I don't know, me taking a stand against Templars or, I don't know, calling out, oh no, what's that man's name? Kenneth? Kenneth Donnelly. For trying to make sexual harassment a personality trait. It's not a good look. It's really not. All right, so. As I said, we're not going to do Horizon today. Horizon's kind of next on our list because um, we just did Communication Hub and we did that, which is an N7 quest. And we did that right after Thessia. If you haven't watched Thessia, it's included in the Streamathon list, which I'm honestly not sure is available anymore. But don't worry because it'll be up on YouTube. So never fear, never fear. Aw, Shibusha? Is that how you say that? Thank you so much for gifting subs to people. That's so kind of you. You you literally just got here, my friend. So A, welcome. B, thank you. All right, yeah, yeah. I love all the pride ones. Thank y'all for posting those. Okay, so game plan for today, chat. A little, as much as we can, right? I'll keep chat up because emo only, and you can't fucking spoil me with emotes. <laughs> oh yeah, that's been a huge problem with me, even when I'm not here streaming. I had one individual who literally spoiled the end of Mass Effect 3 for me in an Instagram post. Um, not the whole thing, but a decent enough part of it because I guess people forget that like others are intelligent and can use context to put puzzle pieces together? Let me tell you, I immediately blocked that individual who then went to every other social media platform that I own to try to chat with me and tell me that my Instagram had been suspended. <laughs> Little did he know, I blocked him on every other platform. So I'm sure he's just off somewhere thinking that all my social media got randomly suspended and it could never be a, a him issue. <sighs> it's such a sad fucking reality where people are so fucking self-obsessed that they don't want to consider that anyone else might want to play the game without hearing them chat about it. Just a thought. <laughs> Just a fucking thought. Okay, I'm not gonna be salty. We're gonna have a really great fucking time. Don't worry about the shit that's been spoiled for me. Um, some of it was shit I'd already figured out and I have talked about. So um, I'll let you guys know when that stuff happens. Um, I A lot of it is indirect, like beat around the bush stuff. Um, but other than a giant fuck you to those people, I'm gonna have a great time anyways. And I hope you guys have a great time too. I'm sorry that a, a lot of the like, not a lot of, some of the blind aspect has been ruined. Um, but, oh, oh, we have a visitor. 
Hello. What are you doing? Oh, those are bright lights, aren't they? Oh, please don't, please don't bop. No bopping. Okay, goodbye. <sighs> she is chaos. Now she just really wants to look at uh, the Mass Effect screen. No, that's a light, ma'am. That's a ring light. <laughs> Not for kittens. So her name is Nanami. Nanami Mimosa, no. If anybody can post which anime that's from without Googling it in the Discord, I will be very pleased with you. Okay. Okay, I guess it's time to go. We might have to have a little bit of a intervention here because she really wants to get into my equipment. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> no, ma'am. I can't lock her out either, though, because she'll scream. <laughs> She's very loud. No. I know, but you, you can't exhibit any self-control. I push the chair away. She uses Merlin's chair to... Jumps up on his chair at the seat, and jumps up into the arm, and then jumps up here. So I have removed her ability to get up here, hopefully. <laughs> I'm also really sorry if she does jump up here and fuck something up. <sighs> but yes, tiny new kitten. Um, Nugget's- Oh, how'd you get up here? <laughs> God damn it. Um, Nugget's new friend because he was antagonizing the other cats and making them very unhappy. And so we got him somebody to play with. We should have done that a long time ago, but it was very hard to do anything during the pandemic because we found him literally as the pandemic started in our backyard. Ma'am, hello. I have not said that you could be over here. She's really chunky. She's got a good mass to her. <laughs> oh, did you squeak? Um, we call her Goblin Girl or Gremlin because if you... uh in her ears a little. I can't do it very well. She looks like one of those Pathfinder goblins with the big old flat heads. That's her. That's her namesake. <laughs> All right, let's try to get in here with, oh no, please stop that. <laughs> with as little kitten interference as possible. I don't know if y'all could hear that meow protest as I put her down. <laughs> All right, no, now she's, oh God. Now she's eating my cord or my headset. Kittens are great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, again, last thing we did was Fessia, then N7 Communications, and we bebopped around the universe a little bit to try to get those last percentages cleared out. We did not succeed in doing all of that, so we'll probably try to bebop some more. But I basically just want to run around and get used to things again. Um, again, it would have been a huge disservice to both of us if I just jumped into Horizon. Uh, we got to go to the Citadel too, so there's that. Um, I I care too much about this franchise, about the characters, and about our Shepherd to have just barreled into that without <laughs> really remembering a lot of what we'd been doing, which is so fucking unfortunate that I had to take a break. But. Uh, Spines are also very important. And if I don't take good care of it, I, I might have to have the surgery again. And I don't want that. It's been a lot to recover from. I would really like to have use of my body again. All right, do we have any emails? We don't have emails. Which seems reasonable because we tend to be really good about taking care of them. Man, this feels so nice to be back. I fucking love this game. Commander. So we probably won't have anyone to talk to. Commander Shepard. Because we probably took care of that last time and we haven't really done anything new, but we can always, maybe we should go to the Citadel first and then bother people. And maybe there'll be something new to say. Just as a quick check, I'm still trying to press J for journal. So ignore Omega, um, like I ignored these quests when I was in there. <laughs> um, so it looks like we still need to get Nimbus cluster shit. Um, I think the other ones we've got, or maybe we already have this, because I think I remember Library of Asha. We, we have to take that back. 
We have some codex. Oh, wow. Did we? Oh, man, look at us. But we haven't done any secondary. So maybe that's some of what we'll do today. Because I feel comfortable doing that, and that helps me get more immersed in the game again. Maybe we'll do some of that. Because I want to be here for the full time, because I missed you guys. And I miss playing this game. Um, so I'd like to find ways that I can enjoy it without, you know, compromising really important shit like Horizon. I don't think we have anything from Potato Dad. No, I can't even access any of these terminals. Or Anderson. Hackett. Not Anderson. Potato Dad's Anderson. See? See? It's been a while. Oh, but look, we've got shit here to look at. So maybe this is the stuff from... Yeah, 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 yeah. From when I was running around, zip-zopping throughout the galaxy. It's Bay. The Shadow Broker's strength lies in her connections. Dr. Liara Tassoni has a team of operatives able to procure almost any supplies at any time. By using an extensive network of bribes, blackmail, and favors... Yo, Oxford comma, please. I would appreciate. This logistical support has become important to building the Crucible. As the disruption of communications and travel makes gathering resources risky at the best of time. Oh no. I don't know if you guys can hear that. <laughs> That's probably Nugget. <laughs> Alright. The 103rd Marine Division. Okay, so we've read, th this is the update one, yeah? Yeah. Is it the very bottom? Commander Shepard's interview with Diana Allers about the attempted takeover of the Citadel, noted Cerberus' tactical missteps. No, we've done that one. Biotic students, we've done. Uh, I think we've done? Maybe it's this, Team Zeta. Who are nicknamed the Bridge Burners, <laughs> a mood. They're combat engineers who specialize in destroying enemy fortifications in hostile territory. This tight-knit group of men and women are respected for their knowledge, renowned for their tenacity, and infamous for their enthusiasm. All right. Third fleet, third fleet. Hmm. We're gonna just think it's the top one again? I feel like we've gotten this one, but who knows? It's been literal years. The SSV Nairobi is a top-of-the-line cruiser, with the showroom finish of a ship just off the factory line. As it has never seen warfare, the Nairobi's officers have been running mock battles in preparation for real enemy contact. Oof. Man, it is... It's never quite like the real thing, though, huh? Communication arrays. Before fleeing Antaram with Commander Shepard's help, technician Grace Sato... Mother of Asami Sato. Saved a copy of the schematics for the Alliance's... Wait. She would have to be like a very distant relative of Asami. Because this is in the future. Copy of the schematics for the Alliance's most advanced communications relay. Sato will use these schematics to build several smaller arrays to collect crucial intel from points in various systems. Ooh, buddy. Synth diamond heat sinks. Synthetic diamond is a key ingredient in military-grade heat sinks that are used in computing, high-end thermal clips, and warship weapons. Liberating tons of it from facilities on Brez will help both ground and space forces. Lovely. Anything we can do to help the effort. Ooh, crucible time. Mmm, bay. The Shadow Broker's unnamed vessel served as both a data repository and stealth ship for the enigmatic information trader. The ship ingeniously drew its power from the thunderstorms raging constantly on the planet it orbited, relying on an interlocking system of kinetic barriers, grounding rods, and capacitators to avoid being ripped apart. I'm going to need another Oxford comma there. Thank you. These systems have been repurposed for sections of the Crucible that require the safe discharge of tremendous amounts of energy. Liara gave us her whole ship. Oh my god. She is just the best. Alright. Perfect. That helps remind me where we are, what we've been doing. Oh, slow laser. I won't tell anyone you're here from work. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are sweet and kind to be here. And to want to be in this community for 11 months. I'm just glad you guys enjoy being here too. 
I really do enjoy it. And it's heartwarming that y'all want to share in it. All right. Let's... So, we did the communications hub, and I think we did scanning after that. Which means that we won't really be able to scan things, because reapers are still running around. Let me double check that theory. I know you guys can see my mouse. So I'm over here, uh... Oh no, is it... Is it right or left mouse to move? <laughs> this is a dangerous game. Woo! It was left. <laughs> oh, zero percent? What have I been doing? Not being good at this game, clearly. Oh no, and I didn't get fuel either. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, wait, but is it here somewhere? Oh, I don't even know. Fuck. Evasion successful. It's just going to pull us back in because we don't have any fuel. Oh no. <laughs> what do? <laughs> no wait, maybe it'll take us to the one with the nearest Mass Effect relay. Oh, thank god. Okay, so. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, game. I know I need to grab some fuel. But there's not any here, surprisingly enough. Okay, that's fine. So, how many... You don't even have a percentage. It looks like I've done my job for the most part. You don't have percentages either. That's sus. Okay, so we gotta do that one. Oh, so is it just the two? That's not that bad. That's not that bad. Um, I feel like if I left this, it's because I couldn't swoop in and grab whichever I was looking for. So, let's just head on over to the Citadel. Oh, I should mention. Um, I'm having to upgrade my case a little bit because it needs a little bit, uh, a little less heat. <laughs> it's hot boy, just like Essek. Um, so he's getting me a new case and he's been scouting for cases and he found an N7 case. So I'm gonna do it. I'll show you guys when I get it set up. It'll probably be a hot second because it, they're like back ordered right now, but it's good shit. Alrighty. Um, yeah, I just want to go to the docks, please. You're cleared to dock, Normandy. Do you need ground transport? No, thank you. I'll handle it. Yes, Commander. Man, Jennifer Hale is just... Ugh. Man, she's so good. I love her so much. Okay, so let's check the map really quick. Um, to see what places we need to head to. War strategist? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so we gotta go to the commons. And maybe that's it for right now. Which is fine, because we can also see Bay. I'm still kind of at a loss as to who to romance when we play Legendary Edition. Um, I think if I gave y'all the choice, you would vote Garrus. Uh, comments. But... But Thane, though. But Thane, though. Okay, where is this person? At two. Alright, we'll head down that way. I still need to find that Dill Flips clip. I've never noticed before that he only has two fingers. Huh. It would be hard to smooch a Turian. Just 
it's not very good for the smoochin. Thane's got lips, though. <laughs> it's not on Twitch anymore. I don't know what happened to it. I'm very sad. I think I have it saved somewhere um, because it's one of my favorites. <laughs> Did I go the wrong way? I'm just busy chatting about <laughs> about Thane. I got distracted <laughs> at me. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Miss Manic! Hello! I thought you weren't going to be able to make it. Thank you for being here anyways. Not that you should ever shirk the things that you need to do in real life to be here, but I'm, I'm happy that you're here. Oh, and you subscribed again. I was busy talking about Thane. Of course I was. <laughs> no, I am watching chat. So I'm going to read your message. Ms. Manic has subscribed for five months. And she says, I know you're probably not watching chat, but I just wanted to stop by while I had a chance to say hi. And I'm glad to see and hear you again. Also, hello, wonderful chat. <laughs> Thank you for that sweet, sweet thought. And that has brightened my day. All right. War strategist. Where are you? Oh, hi. Actually, I found a Cacliosaurus mm. skull preserved in amber. Maybe you could clone it or... You're kidding? You're kidding. Seriously? Well, um, if the genetic material is intact, we could... Hmm. We've got cloning facilities on Sirkesh. Cacliosaur genes were remarkably pliable. Cloning might be effective. I don't think these people have seen Jurassic Park. We all know how that goes. I mean, okay, if we gotta... Okay, if we, <laughs> if we gotta make big old dinosaur boys to help the war affair, I did say, I did say we do what we needed to. Okay, so I know I'm going back this way. We're gonna make a loop and talk to everyone that we need to. Before bay. Because I want to make sure that I am back in the zone. Oh. I thought we had clearance there, sir. I apologize. You know what? I haven't bought well, shit in a while. Oh, look, an aquarium thing. We never did get fish. Excuse me? It we carry it. Oh, it's Geth. I looked at it and immediately thought Reapers. I like Geth. Model live ship. <gasps> Wait, are these just now available? <gasps> I want them. Oh, look at me. I was just like, let's go shopping. I was just channeling my opal from Exandria. And I stumbled upon this. This is perfect. Don't be left out in the cold. I'm not even looking at how much money I got. I'm ready to go. Nice. <laughs> This is the, this is the story of me. I'm like, oh, model ships? <laughs> yeah, let's totally get that. And I don't even look at the gear. I'm tempted to look at other places now, but like, God, I got to listen to this person talking over me. And I kind of hate that. Ooh, an ilium scald fish. <gasps> A koi. Okay, so we will get fish in Legendary Edition. Oh, I don't like jellyfish, though. No, thank you. Jellyfish creep me out. Don't like. Oh, Kelsey. Six months. Thank you, friend. They say it's so great to see you back. I will happily watch you play instead of doing paperwork. Man, that isn't that a mood. Like, why do paperwork when we can run around and look at these cute, chunky pigeons in one of the greatest universes? that have been created. Oh, Jaco. 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 <laughs> Thank you for the sub, but thanks for wanting to be here. Welcome to the community. Yay, this is starting to get familiar and feel like home all over again. It's not quite the same feeling as I get from Dragon Age, but I've played so much more Dragon Age. I'm sure when we get to this part in, in Legendary Edition, I'm just gonna be beside myself. <gasps> Speaking of. Hello, Shepard. Hi, sweetheart. She sounded pensive. I'll leave her to her thoughts. Man, it it's just I know I know the Reapers are attacking and the world is ending, but it feels really good to be here. 
Okay, let's check these two. Welcome to Cipertine Armory. What is the sentry interface? Oh, we get to look like Garrus? Proceeds from all sales. Shields plus 10. I don't want it on my face, though. <laughs> That's just not my jam. Professional grade equipment at reasonable prices. Hmm. I've got tons of money. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to worry about this today. Um, Welcome to Agor Munitions. We'll hold, like... I don't know, a poll, a raffle, or something, or rather let you guys have input on whether or not I buy these things, and if so, what I do buy. Because I honestly couldn't care less. Oh, I like these things, though. So it does the same thing? Can I just have... Oh, it's for different guns. Ugh. Can't even think it's so loud. So we'll we'll deal with that. Um, I don't even remember what guns I used. So uh, I'm not gonna buy anything yet. Sporting goods? sporting goods? Ah! No! Why would I want to wear that? Our selections include rare technology upgrades from the terminus systems. Do I use a pistol? I feel like I use a pistol. What I mean to say is I exclusively use warp <laughs> and occasionally I'll whip out my firearms. Welcome to Casa Fabrication Ooh. Weaponry. Many things. This is what's difficult because there's so many different versions of the N7 armor. Um I wouldn't know what to to make in cosplay. I'm using a pistol and an SMG. Thank you. It's so funny because I know exactly what I'm using in, you know, like, Seven Days to Die. Not so much in Vermintide. I just pick whatever has the most capacity because I just, like, rapid fire that shit. How's the translation going? Really? Excellent. Well, hopefully it unlocks more intel from the archive. Amazing. Uh, that's right. We didn't end up saving Fessy at all. A sorry are so lovely. Okay. So we didn't have much to talk to Liara about, unfortunately. But, oh. Yeah, they're going to have a time of that. I love that they're still recovering from the Cerberus attack. It's just a reminder every time you're here how garbage Cerberus is. Okay, so... Ugh. One moment, please. Oh, my heart. <laughs> mm. now arriving at Huerta Memorial Hospital. I get sweet messages from people who... Um, really vibe with how much I care about the characters here and I've gotten several specifically about Thane and how um, they've either cried with me or it was hard to watch me go through that and it's made them care more about Thane as a character so I mean I'm really glad for both of those uh, not for making people cry but for making people feel you know because I miss him too yes I'm seeing increased turnout as well we may actually make it through this war Fuck yeah. Now we've got Jacob. Oh, that's right, because didn't he like... Oh no, his wife lady wants to name their kid after me. Are they... Wait, are they... Married? I don't remember. No shade either way. Um, I was just... I don't remember. Something else? Um... No, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure we've done all of these. I'm glad we had time to talk. Me too. <laughs> Gotta take the moments when you can. So true. And Shepard, thanks again for getting my people out alive. Of course. Take care, Jacob. You too, Shepard. I'm thinking about you out there. Stay safe. Definitely doing my best on that front. So one of the last things that I saw yesterday when I was catching up on where we are 
is the fact that like even Anderson has uh, kind of recruited Joker to check in and on us and make sure that our mental health is okay. You know, as as, as much as can be. Okay, good. So we've done stuff in here too. Um, all this walking around is really helping me. So I'm sorry it's slow, but thanks for being patient. Um, and I, it's just a constant reminder of how ass it must be to be in Shepard's position. Mm. I'm honestly surprised there aren't more people like on the ground. I mean, like, I mean, here they are, I guess. Because of everything that's going on and how just horrific the war is right now. Dang. Nobody's able to catch a break, really. Medical ship incoming from Thessia. I do really love how the game keeps up with where we are in the story and provides new ambient sound, new ambient dialogue, surroundings even. Status recognized. One moment. Once we've reached these different aspects of the game. It's really well done. Now arriving at ward level oh, I'll, I'll let him do his thing. Why are you angry, big guy? I think we turned in a quest to you, if I remember correctly. Okay, I don't need to go anywhere. Oh, and Steady this on. was the- yeah, 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 yeah. Let's find the gang and celebrate while I'm still here. Where'd you park? I took rapid transit. That was so kind of her. That, that is what we love to see. Oh, so the dudes are gone. Who were mourning their last buddy. Oh, wait. Wasn't there... A pair of people talking here? And he didn't want her to go to his, uh... Or join the boys. For their, I guess, night out? You know what? I haven't ordered a drink yet. Can I even do that? Oh, sorry, I'm not in line. This man looks like Garrus from a distance. Oh, she's going to talk to them. Okay, cute. <gasps> oh, <laughs> she's got buttless glitter pants on. Man, that's great. That is amazing. Sir, can I trouble you for some alcohol? Maybe not. Maybe they're on a no serving shepherd policy. <laughs> Man, those bottoms are the best. I'm not skinning the alive. Oh wait! Can I can I get a drink here? Hold on, let me. Well, we haven't really done anything. We've read some stuff. I'm just gonna save anyways. Save game. In case something horrible happens. Can I do that? Oh, there was just a random drink and you drank it? Shepard. <laughs> you don't know whose drink that was or what was in it. So it changed a little bit, but we can still see just fine. These are the things we're doing today. Cause I want you guys to have a little bit of new stuff while I catch up. Poor Shepard. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if she had at least one. Oh. What are you doing, babe? Oh, hey, Aria. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Arya watched her back. <gasps> we are friends after all. Thanks, Arya. Wholesome. Bye, glitter pants. Man, can we buy a pair of those? Those slap. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. See, this is a good time. Even if it's a bunch of places we've already been before. I'm finding new shit. Ah, we've been to, I don't think we've been to Citadel embassies yet. Oh, that's right. Refugee camps in Citadel are straining existing resources, and the council reports that food shortages may happen in the near future. Oh no. We're not here for food shortages. Perhaps you could send the girl to your side of the family. Are you kidding? My family disowned me when I married Neota. Wanna guess why? They'd be happier to see those Cerberus assholes than they would be to see me. I understand why you would not wish to send your daughter to them. You know, your understanding doesn't help me or my daughter much right now. Get him, Lord Bailey. Man. Just soaking all this in again. I don't think we've got anything to say to Bailey, but... We haven't been here for a hot second. Hey, Shepard. I have to admit, the place feels safer with you here. Everyone's walking around in a daze. Or in my case, limping. And I wonder if we'll ever be the same. These are dark days for all of us. Yeah, how's your leg? Thought you'd be in the hospital. If I'm breathing, I'm working. Probably the worst I've ever been hurt. Fitting, I guess, given the state of the galaxy. But if Cerberus thinks a few slugs is gonna keep me out of action, they've got another thing coming. Uh, make sure you rest. No time for rest. Good luck, Bailey. <laughs> yeah, you too, Shepard. Shepard, that's awful advice. That really is. The man's very injured. And you can't just work off of steam. I wanted to go into there. Oh, we should check this terminal. There's like almost nothing on the monitors. Oh, hmm, what's over here? Ah, yeah. Oh, right, and we can... Surface encryption codes? Is, did we miss this? I mean, clearly it's here. I'm glad I checked. Shit. Okay. Alliance codebreakers are having difficulty cracking Cerberus encryption. For a nominal fee, the Solarian Special Task Group is willing to sell encryption algorithms recovered from Cerberus engineers during the attack on Sir Cash. That was forever ago. Because the sale violates protocol and risks political repercussions within the Solarian government, the seller has asked that STG's involvement be kept quiet. Instead, the data should be marked as discovered on the body of a Cerberus engineer whose equipment failed to self-destruct. Yeah, sure. Whatever whatever we gotta say to make sure this can help a bunch of people. <sighs> I don't know why we wouldn't do that. Okay, so we don't have any of these either. That's good. So... We can probably turn these into someone now. Which is great. We're tying a bunch of uh, loose ends up. There shouldn't be anything over here. Okay, so let's check our map really quick. There we go! Perfect! In fours. Let's head back that way. That was very convenient. Seven hours later. You? Let it be you? Yes! Oh my god. Your intel, right? Mm -hmm. I found these encryption codes on a Cerberus engineer. I thought they might be helpful. Cerberus ciphers? That's exactly what we've been looking for. 
Thank you, Commander. You are so welcome. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> God, uh, after our wild goose chase, at least we got that shit to where I needed to go. So that should be everything now. Okay, so the, I guess we do need to still do the... What was it? The Libraries of Asha or something? Yeah, I was right. Cool. Okay. We'll have to get that next time after Horizon. Or maybe next time after that. I'm not sure how long Horizon's supposed to be. So. Let's... Man, we've only got DLC and Horizon left other than this because I fucked up Omega. Which is whatever. First playthrough. Sometimes you miss shit. So let's head back to the ship. And we'll read some codex entries. Now arriving at Docking Bay D24. <sighs> I'd like to request a transfer to a zone with Reaper Sergeant. And may I ask why you think your deployment deserves special treatment, Private? I think I'll do better against the Oh, little boy. All right. That way it lets us escape some of the noise. Okay, I don't think we'll have anything more. Oh, I'm afraid of going over here. Because <laughs> we're gonna get stuck. No, 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 I've jinxed myself. I can't do it now. We'll just go up and chill out with Reginald and read some codex entries. <laughs> oh, anonymous individual. Thank you. That's very kind of you. All right. Oh, that's right! We bought things! Oh, it's majestic. I'm only missing one now. Hmm, what a baby. All right. Oh, that's right. Our cool virtual chess set. Okay. Odex entry time, it is. I doubt we'll get through all of them, but let's try to get through some. Let's start with the Reaper stuff because I feel like, oh, from Ashes? Is that a DLC? I'm not sure what it is, so I'm gonna avoid that one for today. I don't wanna accidentally spoil something, like part of the DLC I haven't gotten to yet. Okay. I love that these codexes are targeting aspects of the lore or the narrative that the others didn't cover. Like the others were pretty overarching and these are touching on very specific matters. All right. The fall of Earth. The Reapers took Earth in a matter of hours. The Alliance knew the first wave would arrive from Batarian space, but they were unprepared for the speed and scale of the attack. The Reapers bypassed the 6th and 7th fleets at Terra Nova and Eden Prime, flying straight from relay to relay where they could neither be tracked nor intercepted. The tactic was unexpected, since the navies of organic species would never risk coming out of FTL within combat range or leaving enemies at their backs to threaten supply lines but they don't have supply lines because they're Reapers. At Arcturus Station, more than a dozen Reaper capital ships engaged the Alliance's second, third, and fifth fleets. This was mere screening for the main force. Dozens more capital ships continued through the Sharon Relay, where the first fleet had been lying in wait. It was soon destroyed. The fourth fleet, near Earth, had a few minutes of advance warning, but it stood no better chance. After destroying Earth's comm buoys, smaller Reaper destroyers wiped out all GPS and communication satellites in Earth's orbit and cut the undersea fiber optic cables that linked the continents. Earth's resistance now relies on outdated radio towers and a few quantum entanglement communicators 
whose matched pairs happen to be on other continents or outside the solar system. Communication is so limited that the fate of entire nations remains unknown. The capital ships bombarded defense installations and industrial centers, annihilating entire cities with populations in the low millions, including Adelaide, Hamburg, Al Jubal, and Fort Worth. Uh, I'm I'm in Dallas, so Fort Worth is right next to me. So that was like a big like, whoo. And that would be my whole like area. Cause DFW, Dallas, Fort Worth, is kind of seen as a metropolis. Yeah, yeah, that's the word. And so it would probably in this war, my descendants would have already been dead. Meanwhile, Reaper destroyers descended into the atmosphere to melt roads and capture population centers with minimal loss of life. This is not an example of the Reapers being merciful. More likely, they are hurting their prey to make the coming harvest that much easier. Oh. The fall of Karshan. For every thousand Batarian refugees, there are a thousand and one stories about how the Reapers invaded the Batarian systems. A few elements are common to almost every version, however. The Reapers arrived first in the Vular system and immediately destroyed its communications network. The Hegemony's Department of Information Control blamed information control. Sus. Blame the loss of signal on space weather. But scrambled ships to the system nonetheless. No, dude, you gotta be open with people about that so everybody else can prepare. Within a day, Reaper capital ships appeared in the Harsa system and descended on the Batarian homeworld, Karshan. For all the rhetoric about the Hegemony's military prowess, the response to the Reapers was uncoordinated. Moments after the information minister took to the extranet and announced that unknown ships were destroying all space traffic near Karshan. The defense minister declared that there was no reason to panic. What? Are we doing there's no war in Bossing Say over here? The planet's comm buoys were destroyed next, creating an ominous silence that has persisted ever since. Fearing that they were next, Batarian colonies across Hegemony space began evacuations. So many refugees poured into the human-occupied Exodus cluster that Systems Alliance officials at first thought the Batarians were invading. But more systems have gone dark as their comm buoys were destroyed, and millions more Batarians, trapped on their planets, sit waiting for the Reapers. Wow. Desperate measures. Faced with utter annihilation, Military planners have considered extreme solutions in their quest to stop the Reapers. The two most plausible are the destruction of mass relays and the use of starships as suicide weapons. Destroying a mass relay to stop the Reapers' advance is infeasible. You, you think that, but I did it. Although it has recently been proven that mass relays can be destroyed, <laughs> a ruptured relay liberates enough energy to ruin any terrestrial world in the relay's solar system. Unfortunately, yes. It would take too long to evacuate the millions or billions of people living near each relay, and the council's unwilling to sacrifice that many lives when combat stands a chance of saving them. Under understandable. Absolutely. Even if a garden world were to survive the relay's destruction, the Reapers have infinite patience. They travel out of dark space using conventional FTL travel within the galaxy. It's not an insurmountable barrier. Oh, meanwhile, starships are too costly to be used as projectiles, given that it would take many collisions to seriously harm a Reaper. Some armchair admirals suggest that a single starship traveling faster than light could obliterate a Reaper capital ship. But all ships based on Mass Effect technology possess hardwired safety features to prevent FTL collisions. If a ship's FTL plotter finds a significant object in the path of a planned jump, the FTL drive refuses to fire in the first place. This is clearly not a perfect safety feature. The sensors can only scan for objects within a reasonable distance at light speed, and a navigator must plot the rest of the course. But it's so inherent to the FTL warm-up process that removing it is nigh impossible. 
Cynical intelligence analysts note that the secret of Mass Effect technology, including that safety system, has always been attributed to the Protheans. Just as the Mass Effect relays were. What they're saying is that this is inherently part of a system and technology that is Reaper designed. So of course they don't want you to be able to do stuff that could hurt them. Man, the mind fuck. The Battle of Palavin. When Tatris fell, the Turians knew little about the Reapers except that they wanted to enrage the Turians. Staying calm, the Turians massed in force around Palavin, their homeworld. Fleet Admiral Eryx Coronati, in what became known as the 15 minute plan, stationed only two carriers, undaunted and resolute, near the system's relay. When the Reaper fleet emerged, the carriers launched swarms of unmanned fighters and spy drones. These were quickly destroyed, but the drones transmitted vital data on the Reaper's effective range, fleet composition, and exact location. Wow, that's actually hella smart. The Turian's other ships then deployed to defend the systems in earnest. Man, that's so smart, I wouldn't expect anything less than the Turians. Knowing that the Reaper's weapons had a longer effective range than any of his own, Coronati made a short, daring FTL jump. La Landing his dreadnoughts in the middle of the Reaper fleet! The dreadnoughts then turned to line up their main guns on the Reapers, which also needed to turn to fire on the Turians. This ploy used the Reapers' giant size against them. Because they could turn faster, the Turian dreadnoughts locked targets first. And their concentrated firepower downed several Reaper capital ships. Man! The Reapers countered instantly, though. Their destroyers performed a jump of their own to the skies above Palavin, beginning orbital strikes on Turian cities. The Turians, forced to defend the planet, found themselves in a pitched battle far from the relay, from which emerged a seemingly endless line of Reaper ships. After uh, massive casualties, Coronati ordered retreat. The Turians insist that Palavin is not lost. I mean, not anymore. We got some Krogan to help. The battle is merely moved to the ground. Reaper troops transports, Reaper troop transports have dumped hordes of husks to capture Palavin's inhabitants, but have met with little success. Reaper capital ships are destroying city after city, but much of the Turian fleet is still operable and a citizenry is heavily armed. The Turians refuse to be intimidated. Fucking good on them. Also, hello, Aaron. Also popping in from work. <laughs> All right. How many more of these do we have? Just a few. It's good to catch up on these things. Especially because I'm still learning stuff. This is great. The Battle of Rannoch. A little too soon. The Gorian's plan to take back their homeworld was risky and stupid and could easily have led to their annihilation if a peaceful solution had not been found. Absolutely. Like, I'm so glad that we're here and that Legion was such a fucking, like, amazing friend. Honestly, Legion sacrificed his life not only for the Geth, but also for the Corians. That, ugh. Love him. In an initial battle against the Reaper upgraded Geth ships, the Corians found their heavy fleet and a portion of the patrol fleet outmatched. To save off defeat, the Corians retreated at FTL speeds to rally with the civilian fleet on the far side of Ranok's son, Tikkun. Temporarily hidden, but with only minutes of advance warning should a Geth scout spot them, the Corians planned counterattacks to disrupt the Geth link with the Reapers. First preying on a damaged Geth dreadnought, the Corians followed by sending strike teams to Ranok's surface to destroy the Reaper that was transmitting, oh hey, it's just like, teal dioring our mission. Um, to destroy the Reaper that was transmitting improved software to Geth forces. When the Reaper uplink was disrupted, the Geth suffered momentarily downgrades in response time and intelligence, allowing the Corians to press their advantage. But an emergency order from Commander Shepard and Admiral Shalaran Vastombe broke off hostilities before... Th shouldn't it be... Shouldn't it be Tally? Tally was the one that was like, hey guys, can we please fucking calm down? And they wouldn't listen to her. And we were like, hey, calm the fuck down. And then they listened. 
It is to the Quarian's credit that all three fleets obeyed the order to cease fire. Even the civilian fleet, which had little combat experience. The Geth, for their part, bore no ill will towards enemy combatants and broke off hostilities with perfect discipline. It remains to be seen how the Geth and the Quarians will manage to coexist on Rannoch. For now, they have committed their considerable military forces to repel the Reapers. Given the long-lasting animosity between the Gath and Quarians, it is possible that the Reapers did not plan for the possibility of such an alliance, and will be unprepared to contend with both armadas. Which is actually perfect, because if you remember that one fucking... I think the one that we killed there, the Reaper that we killed there on Renar, was running his goddamn mouth about organics and synthetics and their inability to get along or form an alliance or work together. He has been proven incorrect. Ah, the Cerberus coup. Counselor Udina's attempted coup will no doubt be analyzed for generations to come. Oh, love that for humanity, but a clear picture is beginning to emerge. Udina had contacted Cerberus to coordinate what was intended to be a bloodless takeover of the Citadel. Of course he did, because he wanted to be in charge the whole time. Ugh. In which he would force the other counselors to grant him emergency- Oh my god. Emergency power so that he could command the Citadel fleet. He would then direct the fleet to liberate his homeworld, Earth. I wonder if in some odd alternate reality, some twisted universe of his making, whether Udina thought he was saving Earth by doing this. Because he was delusional enough to have fallen down that rabbit hole. The plan fell apart early when Executor Palin and the Salarian Counselor caught wind of it. In defense of the plan, the elusive man dispatched his top assassins. Ugh! Commanded by Kai Lang, who we'll get to, don't worry, to kill them. Odina had little choice but to support the assassins with an armed force sufficient to hold the citadel. Udina, you, you did have choice there. <sighs> Captured confidants have indicated that Udina and Lang's alliance was relatively fragile. Odina may have planned to turn on Cerberus once the fleet was his to command, and Lang departed when he calculated that Odina would not succeed. You're both terrible people, by the way. Persistent rumors suggest that Odina might have been a high-functioning vic- <gasps> What? Of Reaper indoctrination? Yo, I hadn't considered that. How? Where? Where would he have been in close enough proximity? Maybe be through Cerberus? Because we know the elusive man- is indoctrinating his own dudes or using some facet of that technology to control them. We've, we saw evidence of that already. Dang. Oh my god, his actions played right into the Reaper's plans. Even if the coup failed, it would damage Citadel governance. If it succeeded, his plan to retake Earth would likely have turned into a military blunder that Council forces could ill afford. Wow, however, there is no direct evidence of this indoctrination nor obvious opportunity. It's more likely that Udina acted out of desperation and in doing so cost humanity its counselor. Wow, and the respect of a ton of people, you cost so many lives. Um, and I will never forgive Udina for putting Thane in a position where he had to come and save us. It, it costs so much more than that. So much more. Uh, the assault on Thessia. And it's fall. It didn't go as smoothly as the Reaper strikes against other races. While other species met the Reapers head on, the Asai resorted to dangerous hit and run tactics to harass their attacker. By engaging in guerrilla strategies, blasting a Reaper ship, then jumping to FTL where they could not be tracked, the Asari forced the Reapers to remain on the defensive. Unfortunately, the Reaper's greater numbers allowed them to accept certain losses, so they soon ignored the attacks against them and began orbital bombardment of Thessia. This, in turn, forced the Asari to defend their homeworld with a more traditional stance, facing the Reaper forces directly. Oh god, as soon as the Reapers landed on Thessia, the harvesting began. A swift and brutal slaughter of the Asari ground forces followed. Resistance from trained biotics barely slowed the attackers down. In the end, Thessia's minimal military forces, combined with unpreparedness in the face of an overwhelming enemy, resulted in the fall of the planet. 
Yo, but we we had been talking about Reapers for so long. They watched Earth. Like, how could you not be prepared? The miracle at Palavin. Oh, okay, good. We get an update. This is an update. The Turian and Krogan counterattack on Palavin combined deception, courage, and tenacity. See, they're using Oxford commas here. First, the Turians leaked a false battle plan that drew on the same tactics they used at the beginning of the assault on Palavin. Then, the dreadnought Indomitable faked a problem with its drive core coming out of the FDL near Palavin's moon, Manet. Three other dreadnoughts and their attendant fleets deployed to assist Indomitable, a tempting target that drew the Reaper capital ships away from Palavin. Turian troop transports then entered Palavin's atmosphere to release shuttles, gliders, and individual soldier capsules. The Reapers did not understand the seriousness of the threat at first. Those that detected the landing craft sent husks and collector swarms to intercept them. Oh no! Oh no no! But a little more. This allowed Krogan commandos to link up with Palavin's resistance and hand off their payloads. Warp bombs and fission weapons. In simultaneous strikes across the globe, Reaper ships began to explode. Turian resistance members had managed to smuggle the bombs inside when the Reaper processing ships, troop transports, and even destroyers and capital ships had opened their structures to indoctrinate Turian leaders. Oh, don't love that, though. Large swaths of territory fell back into Turian and Krogan control. Little victory is taken where we can. News of the victory gave a much-needed boost to the morale of the Turian resistance in the galactic public. But the action was not without sacrifice. Turian insurgents gave their lives to ensure the explosive detonated, and the processing centers they destroyed were... Oh, God. Full of civilians who died just as surely as if they had been harvested. Oh, that's fucking hard. Of the dead, General Minin Resverick said, Whatever they were in life, their deaths had no equal. They are worthy of joining the spirit of Palavin itself. Oh, that's hard. What next? What sounds good? Uh, technology might give us some updates. But so might weapons, armor, and equipment. Oh, no. How many are you? Oh, that's it? That's it. Okay, I was like, oh god, there's gonna be 75 million of these. Body armor. Modern combat hard suits have a triple canopy of protection, shields, armor, and self-repair. The outermost layer is created through kinetic barrier emitters, which detect objects incoming at a high speed of travel and generate deflecting shields, provided they have enough energy in their power cells. If a bullet or other incoming object gets past the barrier, it contends with the more traditional body armor. A sealed suit of non-porous ballistic cloth provides kinetic and environmental protection, reinforced by lightweight composite ceramic plates in areas that either don't need to flex or require additional coverage, such as the chest and head. When the armor is hit by uh, directed energy weapons, the plates boil away or ablate rather than burning the wearer. Interesting. The last level of protection is provided by the suit's microframe computers, whose input detectors are woven throughout the fabric. These manage the self-healing system, which finds rents in the fabric and, assuming any such tear would wound the flesh underneath, seals the area off with sterile non-conductive metagel. This staunches minor wounds and plugs holes in the suit that could prove fatal in vacuum or toxic environments. Soldiers are not always fond of the, oh, squish skin that oozes gel on them at a moment's notice, but fatalities have dropped sharply since the system was implemented. Wow, that's really fucking cool. I was kind of nervous about reading about weapons, armor, and equipment because that would be boring. But it really, like, it gives you so much insight into not only, like, the way that the equipment, armor, and weapons you're using works, but a lot more about the world as a whole. Kinetic barriers. Shields. Commonly called shields. Provide protection against most mass accelerator weapons. Whether on a starship or a soldier suit of armor, the basic principle remains the same. Kinetic barriers are repulsive mass effect fields projected from tiny emitters. These shields safely deflect small objects traveling at rapid velocities. 
This affords protection from bullets and other dangerous projectiles, but still allows the user to sit down without knocking away their chair. <laughs> Oh man, could you imagine the early prototypes of that? You're like, God, fuck, I, the chair, again. The shielding afforded by kinetic barriers does not protect against extremes of temperature, toxins, or radiation. Mass accelerators. A mass accelerator propels a solid metal slug using precisely controlled electromagnetic attraction and repulsion. The slug is designed to squash or shatter on impact increasing the energy it transfers to the target. If this were not the case, it would simply punch a hole right through, doing minimal damage. Accelerator design was revolutionized by element zero. A slug lightened by a mass effect field can be accelerated to greater speeds, permitting projectile velocities that were previously unattainable. If accelerated to a high enough velocity, a simple paint chip can impact the... What? A simple paint chip can impact with the same destructive force as a nuclear weapon? How? I mean, I know they just explained it to me, but that's just like, wow. Damn. However, mass accelerators produce a recoil equal to their impact energy. This is mitigated somewhat by the mass effect fields um, that rounds are suspended within, but weapon recoil is still the prime limiting factor on slug velocity. Man, that was cool. Small arms. Modern infantry weapons are micro-scaled mass accelerators. I had a thought. It seems like so much, if not all, of this technology is given to us by the Reapers. How long have they been... I mean, oh god, they've been grooming us for forever. On, I don't know, were humans a thing before the 50,000 year... This cycle, I guess? Because we know that the... I know the Turians and the Salarians and the Asari were. And there were a bunch of other races that uh, didn't make it to this cycle. I can't remember what Javik said about humans. But... The, the, the thought that they've... The Reapers have been grooming civilizations. For so much longer than we can probably comprehend. Oh god, it's so wild. Ooh, using mass reducing fields and magnetic force to propel miniature slugs to lethal speeds. Nearly every gun on the battlefield is laden with features, from targeting auto assists to projectile shavers that can generate thousands of rounds of ammunition from a small internal block of metal. It was long thought that personal weapons had plateaued in performance, but the Geth proved all theories wrong. Mathematically reviewing their combat logs, the Geth found that in an age of kinetic barriers, most firefights were won by the side who could put the most rounds downrange the fastest. Both combatants were forced to deliberately shoot slower to manage waste heat, or pause as their weapons vented. To eliminate this inefficiency, the Geth adopted detachable heat sinks known as thermal clips. <gasps> oh, that's for the Geth? I didn't know they invented that. That's so cool. While organic arms manufacturers were initially doubtful this would produce a net gain, a well-trained soldier can eject and swap thermal clips in under a second. Faced with superior enemy firepower, organic armies soon followed the guest lead. And today, battlefields are littered with these thermal clips. Oh no. We are uh, creating a lot of waste, apparently. Tech armor and fortification. Although body armor and kinetic barriers provide significant protection for relatively low cost, Technically savvy soldiers sometimes go further. Tech armor, or mage armor, is the common term for a complex series of field generators that disrupt incoming force using a stationary warp effect. The theory is that bullets that would normally shatter on impact instead break apart when they strike the field. The field then bleeds away the shrapnel's kinetic energy. The standard design for tech armor traps the warp field between two low yield kinetic barriers to protect the user from the field itself. When the outer barrier fails, the warp effect is discharged, potentially harming anyone nearby. For this reason, many soldiers modify the armor with a haptic style light effect to warn allies not to get too close. On missions where stealth is paramount, this effect is disabled. Cynical soldiers joke that design is called tech armor because if it were simply called warp armor, no one would use it. 
The fortification approach uses high energy batteries and superconductive devices within the armor to create a focalt current effect, essentially a magnetic field that can immobilize metals, even in non-ferrous ones. The field is triggered by sensors similar to those in a kinetic barrier. It is powerful enough to protect against most modern weapons, but there are drawbacks. The currents cause metallic objects to hold their position relative to one another, and although the field only lasts for a split second, it creates resistance that can slow or fatigue the wearer. Without specialized training, a soldier can quickly become exhausted or ooh, stumble at the wrong time. That would be rough. Okay. That's all my voice has in it for the moment. So, I know it's a little early, but I think it's smart to ease into this instead of go full ham. Is it full ham or full hog? <laughs> Either way, right off the bat. So, I don't think we have too terribly much left. We've got Horizon. Um, we've got some DLC. Now, I mean, clearly we could come across more stuff in the meantime. And I feel like we'll have to confront the Crucible at some point. Um... But, I mean, like, what? That's, like... So maybe we'll finish it by my birthday? Birthday's, um, coming up in October. And birthday things next month. I don't know what we're gonna do. I don't know what we did last year. I think I just had a birthday stream and just stayed on as long as I could and just hung out. I think I was wearing my strawberry dress. Which I may bring back. Because, uh, it's a strawberry dress. You have to wear it at every opportunity. <laughs> Not every, but but many opportunities. Oh, Jan, thank you. You're so sweet. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you always jumping in on our Patreon streams. It's good to chat. <sighs> thank you so much. Yes, oh my God, Eero, thank you for the reminder. We have a new emote. How could I forget? Um, because I've been gone for like a month and a half. Um, we have a be gay, do crime. It won't now. It's amazing. Um, Ms. chose that for our next email because she won the um, year giveaway or a year of us being on Twitch, our anniversary giveaway. Thanks for watching. For more content, you can check out these videos or my stream on Twitch or Cosplay on Instagram or my OnlyFans. All the links are in the description. Have a great rest of your day.